the first generation of her family to be born in the United States as her parents were both immigrants from Ireland. In 18, 1989, she had the opportunity to visit her relatives in Ireland. She drove 900 miles through the countryside, visiting aunts, uncles, and cousins. She even found both of her parents' childhood homes, which was a great delight. Her mother had two sisters, which were born after she came to America, and her mother never got back to Ireland to meet them. Sister Liz had the joy of meeting them and visiting their homes in Dublin on that trip. At the age of 53, Sister Liz had some health issues that caused her to make a change and begin ministering to the elderly. In that ministry, Sister Liz often told people that old age is a vocation. She explained to them, and I quote, In youth and middle years, you wonder if you are fitting into God's plan. If you live to be old, you can be sure it is part of the plan or else you never would have made it. She continued by saying, Old age, if lived with grace and dignity, is like every vocation, a form of worship. End quote. Having lived to the age of 98, she had been enjoying this form of worship for many years. A reading from Philippians. I thank my God for you every time I think of you, and every time I pray for you, I pray with joy because of the way in which you have helped me in the work of the gospel from the very first day until now. And so I am sure that God, who began this good work in you, will carry it on until it is finished on the day of Christ Jesus. You are always in my heart, and so it is only right for me to feel as I do about you. For you have shared with me in this privilege that God has given me, both now that I am in prison and also while I was free, to defend the gospel and establish it firmly. God is my witness that I tell the truth when I say that my deep feeling for you comes from the heart of Christ Jesus himself. I pray that your love will keep on growing more and more, together with true knowledge and perfect judgment, so that you will be able to choose what is best. Then you will be free from all impurity and blame on the day of Christ. The Word of God. Now is our time to share memories of Sister Liz. Please raise your hand and we will bring the microphone to you. Please state your name and stand if you are comfortable. I am Sister Virginia Jennings and I am privileged to share some memories from uh, Sister Liz's niece, Karen. She has lovely thoughts to share. As a child, when Sister Liz would visit her brother, my dad, Tom, at our family home, I would experience this tall, beautiful, loud, funny woman in full habit. I was totally enthralled 
and literally look up to her. She was kind and engaging and had a smile that, and laugh that lit up any room. She had a magical way of making me feel special that I was the only one in the room of a family of eight. I loved visiting the convent where she lived in Northeast Portland, All Saints Parish, with my family. It was never boring to me. I was terribly sad when she moved to Dubuque, yet we managed to have a relationship via the phone and cards and letters. We would talk on the phone and Sister Liz was always interested in everything I was doing. She made me feel like the cat's meow. Soon after a phone conversation, I would receive a note with more supportive and inspiring words. Her unconditional love helped me through several rough patches in my life. She always thought I was great, no matter what. What a blessing to have someone like that in your life. Finally, in 2003, when we were traveling across country, we made sure Sister Liz was part of, itiner of our itinerary. Mike and I loved our visit and we had time to have a tour of the convent. Sister Liz showed us the door she used, used to sneak back into when she got home late at night. To this day, that still makes us laugh. During that visit, we had time to go to dinner and then have Sister Liz back to see our motor home and had the opportunity for me to give her a present in person. Sister Liz gave me a CD of music called Shalom and I play it in my massage room and think of her and our visit. She also made me a white woolen rabbit that I call Emily that I keep on the dash in our motor home. Emily has been on thousands or hundreds of trips with us over the last 20 years. Sister Liz was also engaging and loving to my husband Mike and always inquired as to how he was doing. She would send both of us homemade ornaments at Christmas time. Many times when she called, I would be out and Mike and sister would catch up. We had many phone calls until just a few years ago when it became harder for her to manage the phone. I am and will always be grateful to the dear sisters, nurses, and staff at Mount St. Francis who made sure Sister Liz's days were comfortable and for the kindness and caring they bestowed on my favorite aunt. I keep all of you in my prayers. What a blessing you are to so many. Love, Karen and Mike. I'm uh, Sister Teresa Junkers. Uh, most of us, uh, some of us at least, are aware of how proud Sister Liz was of her Irish heritage. And so when I lived with her, she gave me this recipe, Mom's Irish Soda Bread. And I've always been going to make it, but I never got to it. So I decided this is the time to do it. So I will make a soda bread for Claire House and Francis House for tomorrow in her memory.
I'm Sister Lois Erpelding, and I have a memory from Chuck and Kathy Hartle. Dear Franciscan sisters, oh my, where did I start with our dear friend, Sister Liz? So many special memories of her and her other sisters. It was 1991 when our, love, when our son, Brian, got called with his National Guard unit to Saudi Arabia. Chuck and I were devastated. I started looking for sources of faith. We did not know anything about Shalom at the time, but read in the Telegraph Herald, there were masses being held for peace. They started before the war began and continued twice a week until it ended. One night, I came out of the chapel crying, and there was Sister Liz asking me what was wrong. We told her about Brian, and she immediately said that she would adopt him as her soldier and would pray for him and write to him. That was the beginning of our long friendship. We visited her many times, and once our grandchildren were born, they came along as infants and into their school years. Communions. We have many pictures of our special memories. We went, we went out to eat often and took rides around the countryside. We attended her 50th Jubilee and it's something we'll always remember. She was so happy that day and we were happy for her. It was a blessing to be a part of the good things that came out of a bad situation. Was getting to know about Shalom. We met so many sisters and friends, which was a joy. Everything about Shalom is faith-filled and leaves a positive impact. I could go on and on, but no amount of words is going to tell how Sister Liz has left her footprints on our hearts. God bless her, and may she now rest in peace. Love and prayers, Chuck and Kathy Hartle. I'm Sister Joan Meyer, and I lived with Liz when she was ministering at Holy Trinity. And I was present for her farewell from the parish, and the pastor was the MC for that day. And I considered him quite shy and retiring. For him to be the MC told me that he really admired Sister Liz. And he tells how Liz would go into church and take the funeral flowers to the shut-ins. Liz called her car the Blue Angel. And she loved to go to the river with some ice cream and just contemplate the river there. I am Sister Mary Peter, and I have a memory from Father Pat McNamee. He writes, I am a priest now for 51 years and grew up in Portland, Oregon. I was and am gifted with the support of the Franciscan sisters who were a strong presence of joy, which I witnessed in their strong prayer life the success in the art of teaching, and the community life that flowed over into All Saints Parish in Oregon. This parish was in, was in the 1950s and 60s, a Camelot of liturgy, good pastoring, and 14 women religious all mixed together. 
This fostered my vocation and happiness to this day. The prayers of these sisters are still pushing me along and foster my depth of happiness as a priest. Sister Liz Brady came to her home in Portland and loved being home again. She was with her parents for anniversaries and the journeys to heaven. She and I twinned up and enjoyed catching up on who were related to us and telling a story or two on them. She is a cousin of mine, by the way, of the Malahans, who, by the way, were great men and strong women chieftains in Ireland, ruling with justice and charity. Maybe that's why she took the profession name of Sister or Saint Martin, who lived these virtues. Many gifts came from these men and women of early relatives, including the gift of gab, the gift of hype, and the ability to find your way out of a paper sack on a dismal day. I was attracted and empowered by the charm of Sister Liz's art of putting these gifts into action. In fact, in fourth grade, I wanted to join up I was disappointed that I didn't meet the qualifications. Thank you, Sister Liz, for that gift of happiness and friendship. You were and are a bright star with the strength of the chieftains and now brightly shining in the heavenly communion of saints. I'm Sister Tecla Kane. I was one of those 14 women that went out to Portland along with Liz. Liz and I lived together about six years out there. And we do have many memories. Just a wonderful place. Pat, Father Pat was um, out there. And uh, of late years, the last couple of years, Father Pat and I have been conversing by email. He wanted to come and see Sister Liz, but um, the virus did not allow that. He was very disappointed that he couldn't come. He knew that she wasn't in real good health. But Pat has been her companion for many years. I'm Sister Helen Nelson, and um, I want to tell you that um, I was not, um, I didn't live with Sister Liz, but Sister Liz was one of the people at St. Al Saints when I entered the community. And she and Tecla and Angelita and Bonaventure and um, so, so many others. Angelita um, and so many others were um, part of the reason that I switched from going to the Mercy Order to coming to the Franciscans 56 years later. And I want to thank Sister Liz for um, being an example to me of what caring and loving meant. And that's why I changed from, from one order to the other.
Thank you for sharing your special stories and remembrances of Sister Liz. We will continue to share our memories with one another in the coming days and weeks. And so we close in prayer. God of friendships, guide us to nurture our love for one another as sisters and brothers. May we travel from this moment forward in awareness of our bonds to each person. Sacred One, giver and sustainer of life, thank you for the Holy Ones whom we have known, especially for the life of Sister Liz. May our lives model the virtues of the holy men and women who have gone before us, and may our hearts resonate with their goodness. In your holy name we pray, amen. We will close with number 372, Irish Blessing, verses 5 and 6. Number 372, verses 5 and 6. <laughs>